You've run out of storage on your Windows Virtual Machine in VirtualBox, and there's no obvious way to add more. But there is a way, and we're about to show you. Hello everyone, and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In this tutorial, we will increase the size of our primary hard drive on a virtual machine running Windows. To do so, we of course need to borrow from our host machine, and the most obvious method is simply to add a secondary drive for storage. But what if we want to increase the system drive and not add an extra disk? The settings in VirtualBox don't provide a means of doing so, and heading to the Storage tab before selecting the VDI file acting as our primary virtual hard drive only offers the option to remove attachment, with no inbuilt mechanism to expand the capacity of the drive. We therefore need to get creative, but not before taking the sensible precautionary step of exporting a copy of our virtual machine to guard against a worst case scenario. From the file menu, we select Export Appliance, and in the Export Settings dialog, we select the Destination folder, then click Next. We can optionally change the descriptive information by double clicking the relevant field before clicking Export to continue. At this point, the export commences and may take a few moments to complete. Once we have the insurance of an exported copy, we can now safely experiment with our virtual machine. Returning to the main interface, we right click on our virtual machine, where we select the option to show in Explorer. Here we see the VDI file, which is almost certainly the largest in size within the directory. We would suggest leaving this window open for much of the remainder of this tutorial, as we will be working extensively upon this file and making reference to its name, location and extension. Our first task is to effectively take the virtual hard drive offline in order that we can work on it. At the main interface, we head to Settings, and from the general settings, we head to Storage, where we select our VDI file. We click on the small disk with a red cross to remove it. This doesn't delete the file, but breaks the link between the physical file and our virtual machine. With the disk detached, we click OK. We now click the Start button and search for Command Prompt, selecting the option to run as administrator. The command prompt appears, and we will only be entering two commands. The first points toward the VirtualBox installation directory, whilst the second expands the VDI file. As always, you can find copies of our commands in the written description accompanying this video, from which you can cut and paste. We therefore enter the command to change the directory to our VirtualBox installation folder. By default, this command will be cd C Program Files Oracle VirtualBox. However, if like us you've customised your installation and opted to install away from the default, you'll need to amend the value between the quotation marks to reflect your installation path. Once complete, press Enter. Focus now changes to the VirtualBox directory. We're now going to input a long command broken down into several parts, so don't press Enter until the entire command is input. We begin by entering vboxmanage.exe modify medium, then a space and open quotation marks. Now we need to enter the location of the VDI file, which we can easily recover from the file explorer window which we opened in the previous step. With the window open, we click in the title bar, then right click and copy the file path. Returning to command prompt containing our partially completed command, we right click and select the option to paste our file path. Now that we've added the file path, we add a further forward slash, and now need to enter the file name. Returning to our File Explorer window, we select our file and long click as though to rename it. With the file name highlighted, we again right click and select the option to copy. Back at the command prompt, we select the option to paste, adding the file name to our command. We then simply type the .vdi extension. Next we enter a single space and a double minus sign and type Resize. Now we need to enter a size expressed in megabytes. The choice of the new size is entirely yours. You'll remember that we started with a full 50GB drive, which we'd like to modestly increase to 60GB. We need to express that 60GB in megabytes, so we'll opt for a value of 60,000. We've now fully assembled our final command, and press Enter to execute. Once processing is complete, we type Exit to close the command prompt. We then return to VirtualBox, once more selecting settings for our virtual machine. We again move from General to Storage, and now we opt to add hard disk by clicking the relevant icon, and selecting the option to choose Existing Disk. Our existing disk is helpfully included in the selection panel, and we choose it, thereby reattaching it to our virtual machine. 
Our virtual machine is now ready to run. We run it, eventually returning to the virtual machine desktop. When we check under this PC, we now have 13.4 gigabytes free, but this is a misdirection as the total capacity hasn't increased beyond the original 48.6 gigabytes. Right clicking the start button, we select disk management. In the disk management window, we can see that an extra 8.59 gigabytes has been made available, but the presence of a recovery partition effectively prevents this additional capacity being employed to expand our C drive. As disk management doesn't offer a convenient solution, we'll turn to a free third party utility to achieve this effect. We therefore download EasyOS Partition Master from the link shown on screen now and in the written description accompanying this video. Having entered our email address, we click Try Partition Master Free and the download begins. Upon completion, we click to run, clicking Yes where user account control appears to query our intention. Upon completion of the download, we click to install. We're content to accept the default installation options here, as we're likely to simply uninstall immediately after use, as disk partitioning is a task rarely undertaken. There follows an advertisement for the full version, although wherever possible we prefer free tools, and therefore select Install Free. After a brief downloading phase, the installation follows, at the end of which we are met with a congratulatory screen, where we click to start now. The application launches with a splash screen and is initially somewhat chaotic, with both an upgrade screen and an advertisement displayed. We therefore click to remove the upgrade screen, before doing likewise with the advertisement. Note that we are essentially presented with the same information shown by Windows Disk Management, in that we see our main C volume, our recovery partition and our new 8.6GB of extra storage. The plan is therefore to remove the recovery partition by merging it with the C volume, then also merge the 8.6GB volume. We begin with the recovery partition selected and right clicking for a menu, from which we select the option to merge. We are then invited to select an adjacent drive with which the merger will be performed. The C drive and recovery partition are now selected and we are ready to execute one operation, and we therefore click to execute. A summary of the merger is displayed and we click apply. At this stage a reboot is required and we click yes to proceed. The virtual machine restarts as normal before a boot mode operation is performed and we receive notification of successful processing. We are returned to the virtual machine desktop. We could use EasyOS to repeat the merger between the C drive and the extra storage, but instead we right click the start button and select disk management. Now we see that the recovery partition has been merged into the main C volume. Our C drive is now adjacent to our new storage and this configuration allows for very simple merger. We right click the C drive and select the option to extend volume. The extend volume wizard appears and we click next to advance. At the select disks dialog, our extra disk zero is pre-selected. We click next and are taken to a summary of operations where we click finish. We now have a singular C drive at 58.05 gigabytes, and this is reflected in this PC. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.